if the panel before us this morning was the, the pessimism of reason, I see our work today as being really the, the optimism of the will in a certain sense. And at least for those of us of, a, let's say, Gramscian um, influence, uh, we know that will, especially when it's translated in political practice, uh, actually has the capacity to, to, to influence and radically transform the, reason, the reasoning and the analysis uh, as well. Now, as the, the political situation is constructed primarily through, through processes and undoubtedly the transnationalization, the capacity to build a transnational political um, action, a transnational subjectivity perhaps, is one, is, is one of the key contradictions we have today. I, I uh, remember yesterday evening in the conversation between Zizek and Tariq Ali, um, both of them agreed that um, electoral processes are no longer enough. Uh, undoubtedly there needs to be a very strong pressure from, uh, from social movements, from civil society to accompany uh, uh, and transform the results of elections themselves. Uh, in my mind, one of the reasons why electoral processes are no longer enough is that we're witnessing a quite radical transformation of sovereignty in the European space, a shift in sovereignty from the national to not merely the transnational, but a space of diffuse sovereignty where it is not very clear who is in charge, whether it's a, it's a central bank, whether it's a transnational parliament or a hybrid institution like the European Commission or a certain consensus of the markets. And we need to find a way of... Uh, 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 relating to that transformation of sovereignty and uh, applying political pressure at a level which is no longer that of the nation, uh, of the nation state. What that means, however, is that uh, if, we, if we want to accompany the electoral processes with, with, with real practices on the ground, or practices stemming from social movements, uh, aut autonomous influences, etc., etc., these practices need to become truly European practices. They need to become truly transnational practices. Now, the bad news is that so far we have been really bad at doing this. Uh, and by us, I mean uh, political parties. Um, really going extremely quickly. We all know that European political parties uh, are extremely fragile. They are a conglomeration of national parties that work a little bit like the European Council does, fragmentation between national lines. Uh, there is very little sense of a real European unity uh, within the European political families, the European parties. But also, and even more importantly, national parties in, in Europe have been incapable of transnationalizing their own practice. I find it extremely sad that the only rejoice we have is that the Mercosy axis is now uh, being replaced possibly with the Frangela uh, axis, uh, as if uh, all that we can hope from the, the Europe of political parties is that the leader of one of the most important European nation states be replaced be replaced with a leader more akin to, to our cause. What I think should have happened is for uh, national political parties to call something like a summit uh, of, 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 of peripheral parties. Why is it that we have seen a show in Paris with uh, Hollande, with Bersani from the Italian PD and the leader of the German Social Democrat, but we have seen no space of convergence between uh, Greek, Portuguese, Spanish, Romanian, Bulgarian, Italian political parties. That is the incapacity of political parties at a national level to think and act European. Uh, the same bad news is possibly true about trade unions. In the context of the great, say, greatest crisis since 1929, the context of the greatest dismantling of the welfare state and privatization uh, of public services, uh, uh, a few weeks ago I was at a conference of trade unions in Brussels and, uh, and, and one of the leaders of the European Trade Union Confederation said, well, uh, it's still a few years too early to think about and talk about a European strike. Well, it's not. It's too late already to talk about a European strike. And if European trade unions are unable to go beyond the national logic of the European Council in their transnational European meetings, that is a very, uh, very big problem, which is a very big problem for the left. Uh, civil society, and this is what, uh, where I want to focus the, 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 the conclusion of, 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 the, of the first intervention. Uh, we also have these problems. Um, there, there, there could be a thousand examples that can be given, but in my mind it's very clear the uh, day after the attack on the Twin Towers in uh, New York and there were demonstrations throughout Europe saying we are all Americans. Well now they are destroying a whole country, but I haven't seen a demonstration saying we are all Greek, uh, uh, covering the whole of the, of, of the European territory. The lack of, of, of solidarity between citizens is, ab is absolutely scary in my mind, as is the difficulty of social movements to go beyond just an episodic protest and, and enact a real transnational mid-term political process at a European level, which is what, what I want to say a last uh, word about. Uh, Frankfurt. Whenever I think of Frankfurt, I think of uh, Ponte Corvo, the Battle of Algiers, uh, which I think is fitting to, 
mentioned in this uh, festival because it's a film festival. Last, last week it was a film festival as well. And what you see in Ponte Corvo very well is that the practice of, uh, of terrorism, the, pra the practice of putting bombs in, uh, in, in Algiers, was not an end in, the, in, in, in itself, but was meant to act as a wake-up call, as, as, a, as a bell uh, for a popular mobilization, a popular uprising, which had been prepared in advance in very great detail and with a very great strategic and tactical planning. Now, it, 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 episodes like Frankfurt, for me, uh, have the function of being a wake-up call for European citizens and for European movements. Something is moving. In the center of the, of the core European uh, uh, institutions, uh, people are protesting, uh, some violence might take place, the media impact might be strong, and that is absolutely essential. But that needs to be followed by a mid-term uh, tactical and strategic uh, uh, vision of how we go beyond uh, ephemeral one-off uh, protest episodes and instead try to show that there is a united front for a transnational uh, 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 European alternative. The last uh, uh, sentence to say that, uh, and maybe in the, in the second round we can go uh, into more detail on this, um, in thinking of what tactical tools we have at our disposal, uh, to, to, to enact this convergence of, of, of forces at a transnational level, one tool, this is by no means the only one, I, I, I only have time to mention one, so I will mention this one because it hasn't been mentioned today yet, is that of the European Citizens Initiative. Uh, as you know, the Citizens Initiative allows one million citizens from at least seven European member states to present the European Commission with a legislative proposal uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for, for, for enactment. Uh, it's by no means a perfect tool. Uh, the Commission has political discretion. The European Council will never, never approve the, mo the most radical uh, uh, citizens' initiative. But it is the first example of a transnational proto-pseudo-participative democratic practice that we have. Now, this proto-pseudo-transnational democratic practice we have can be used as a tool to mobilize citizens transnationally throughout Europe around a key set of systemic, of structural issues and contradictions that our continent faces. We have three or four that are already taking shape. There is one uh, going directly at the heart of the attack on public services and privatizations that we see throughout the European Union for the defense of water as a fundamental right uh, and, and a common good for all the citizens to be able to use. Uh, this uh, is being accompanied by a wider movement on the idea of commons that goes beyond uh, just the question of water and embraces public services and access, access to, fundamental, uh, 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 to, to, to fundamental goods and fundamental values. Uh, there is a, uh, the building of a European convergence on basic income or minimum, or minimum income as an, as an attempt to give a response precisely to those young people that were being mentioned before, uh, to give those young people an alternative to systemic unemployment reaching 20, 30, 40 percent uh, or uh, complete subservience to market forces or unacceptable job, job offers. Uh, th there, is, there are ideas for a citizens' initiative against uh, the detention of irregular migrants in the European Union. There are many more I don't have time to, 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 go, to, to go into. But what, what, what the message that I want to send is that if we take seriously the idea of going beyond just a cahier de doléances, just a list of we are against this, we are in favor of this, and use the ECI, use the Citizens Initiative as a tool, not simply to say what we're against and what we're for, but to build transnational alliances that collect millions of signatures to present a legislative proposal around these issues, maybe we begin to mobilize a sufficient number of people around very concrete issues, not just the idea of an alternative Europe, but income, migrant rights, access to water, public services. We manage to mobilize a sufficient number of people to make the message that there is a way out of the crisis, that there is a very very concrete political alternative in this continent to suicidal austerities, we make this message begin to pass in people. And this is what we need to do because we, it's no longer the time for 10,000 people to go in protest. It's the time for tens of millions of Europeans to be convinced that an alternative exists. Now the good news for us is that the alternative actually really exists and it's for us to try and make it happen.